say the game is getting old. Monday morning and your coffee's cold. Life is not what you want it to be. Hello everyone and welcome to a new direction. My name is Jay Izzo and we have got an amazing show today. I am telling you, Dr. Ken Best is joining me today and he is outstanding. And listen, I know that some of you are going to be listening to this on a podcast later. Some of you are catching us live on CastBox FM and of course Facebook Live. And I'm holding up this book for the Facebook Live people, 11 Best Ways to Face Life's Challenges by Dr. Ken Best. The book is outstanding. First of all, folks, look at the, the I'm holding the bind, the, the, the binding here, right? The, the spine of the book. It's not a thick book. This is a quick read, but it is filled with practical, useful, awesome, amazing, put it to work right now stuff that's going to change your life. I'm telling you, this is a life-changing book. I loved this book. I loved every page of this book. It's going to help you. It's going to help you grow. It's going to affect every area of your life. It's 11 best ways to face life's challenges. And we're going to talk to Dr. Ken Best, who is outstanding. And people are joining us all over the place right now. Thank you, people all over the world who are joining us. And certainly all my folks who are downloading this later, thank you for joining us here live. So what do we do? Well, let's do what we do every week, right? I walk you through the four areas of your life, all right? And and I ask you, because I believe that we're four part people. I believe that we are physical people, we're mental people, we're emotional people, and we're spiritual people. So just walking you through the areas of your life right now, scale of one to 10, one being miserable, 10 being amazing, right? Outstanding. On that scale of one to 10 out there in the world, right? And people listening in their cars and podcasts and everything. Scale of one to 10, where are you at physically? Right? You, what, what's that number? What's that number between one and ten that you feel like you are right now? Right? And then I want to ask you a question: Why are you that number? Right? Is it because you're not eating right? Is it because you're not feeling well? Is it because you're not getting the exercise that you need? Right? That's, that's the first question you ask. And then the the next question you ask is: What can you do to change it right now? And when I mean change it, what can you do to change that number to get you to the next number, or maybe the next half number? Right. The goal here is not to get from if you're a three, if you tell me you're a three today. All right. I'm not trying to get you from a three to a ten. Right. I I want you to get to a three point five to a four. All right. What can you do to change right now? I mean, do you you need to take your hand out of the bag of chips? Do you you need to take some walks? Maybe walk the dog a little extra? You know, maybe stop drinking the sodas. By the way, that's a really useful thing. Stop drinking soda. I know I just blasphemed right to so many people out there, but maybe that's a good idea. Right. So you got that number? All right, that's your physical number, okay? All right, next one, next part of your life, your mental life, right? On a scale of one to 10, one being miserable, 10 being outstanding. Where are you at mentally? What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, what are you feeding your brain, right? You know, we feed our brain such garbage so often. You know that? We really do. You know, if you're one of those news people who just have to listen to the news all the time, do you understand that the more news you listen to, the angrier you probably are? Not only are you angry, you probably have a more of a prob- higher probability of becoming depressed by watching the news. See, I am not making this up. If you're somebody who watches the news religiously all the time, reads the news all the time, and all you do is, is just reading all those things and listening and consuming all that, that's you're feeding your brain. You know, and it's not feeding your brain anything good, right? When's the last time you read a really good book like, I don't know. 11 best ways to face life's challenges. That would be a good one, right? Listening to the show is a good way to feed brain because this is a positive show. We're trying to help you in a positive way and encourage you, right? So what's that number for you mentally, by the way, all right? Is it is it a four, five, two, right? What can you do to change it, right? Why did you get there? And then what can you do to change it, okay? You got that number? Good for you. All right, then let's look at emotionally. And what do I mean? Same scale, one to 10, one miserable, 10 outstanding. How are you emotionally? And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean here is... You know, there's this thing we call sometimes an emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. And basically what we're really trying to get at is how well are you able to control your emotions? Do the little things bother you? Right? Doctor, I, I love what Dr. Ken Best is going to tell you because I say this all the time, right? Sometimes emotionally, you know what we got to do? We got to fake it till we make it. You may not feel it, but sometimes we have to fake our feelings to get to our feelings. All right. And that's, you know, that's part of our emotional intelligence, right? How well are you able to, you know, control your feelings, control those emotions? Not only that, how well are you able to relate to the emotions of others? Right. That's all part of it. And what would you give you for a number? What would you give yourself on a number on a scale of one to 10? 
when it comes to your emotions. All right, you got a number there? Okay, then finally, the last part, spiritually. Where are you at spiritually on the same scale of one to 10? Well, meaning like, what do I mean by that? Well, you know what? Science doesn't explain everything. <laughs> I'm just sorry, it doesn't. I'm a science guy. I just know that it doesn't explain everything. And I know that there's things inside ourselves that we search for that bring us peace or bring us joy, which isn't happiness. It's a completely different thing, but keeps us centered on some level. And, you know, sometimes we do that through meditation. Sometimes we do that through prayer. Sometimes we believe in God. Sometimes we believe in nature. Sometimes we believe in karma. Sometimes we make ourselves our own God and we believe that we are the only thing that creates faith. Whatever that is for you, I'm just asking you, how is that going for you? Right? On the same scale of one to 10, one being miserable, 10 being outstanding, how is that place, that place of spiritual rest, right? That place where you can go to and, and, and get that spiritual peace, right? Settled, right? And if it's God, how's that going for you? If it's nature, how's that going for you, right? All right, so you have four numbers, right? You got a physical number, you got a mental number, an emotional number, and a spiritual number, right? And those are like the legs of a table right? If it's unbalanced and you're trying to eat off of a, off of a table that's unbalanced, guess what? The, the plate's going to slide off, right? And also if they're all really low, you know, and you're sitting in a normal chair, it's hard to eat there too, isn't it? Right? So the whole idea here is that what we want to do is we want to have a well-balanced life, be well-balanced in the four areas of our life, bring that table up together so that we can eat at the table and that we can actually enjoy it. And this brings me to my my guest, and I am so excited. His name is Dr. Ken Best. He is a doctor of chiropractic out of Los Angeles. And by the way, he is the chiropractor to the stars. Seriously, ser- just you, he, listen. If if you think of anybody famous in Hollywood or athletes or anything like that, he's probably worked with them. Yeah, just that guy. Yeah, he's written books like 99 Things You Wish You Knew Before Life's Challenges. Of course, he's written this book. He's got an, the, the 11 Best Ways to Face Life's Challenges. He's got a new book coming out as well and uh, rewriting your life. Uh, he specializes in applied kinesthesiology. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it right. Kine- mm, boy, I'm having a hard time with it. Applied kinesiology. Thank you, Jay. Uh, otherwise known as AK. And uh, um, I don't know why that hit gives me such a, that I stumbled over that, right? I, I write four books and speak all over the country and I can't say kine- kinesiology. Don't ask me why. Anyway, he takes a real holistic approach. He does acupuncture, no lymphatics, neurovascular, uh, cranial, sacral, and uh, non-force adjusting. He is unbelievably well known. He has developed programs to work with athletes and and all sorts of people. He helps get at the real heart and core and soul of what's going wrong in your life. And right, because we're all, it's all connected, just as I explained. And he joins us today to talk about his book, 11 Best Ways to Face Life Challenges. Please welcome to the program, everyone, Dr. Ken Best. Dr. Best, welcome to A New Direction. Wow, thank you so much for a great introduction. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And Dr. Best is brought to us by who else but inline business brokers and advisors. Listen, if you're a business owner at some point, you're going to need the services of a business broker. These people are internationally well-known. That's inline business brokers and advisors. Selling your business is a huge decision. Make sure you start your by building your real deal team, and that's the people at inline business brokers and advisors. They are the experts. They are the gurus. They are the people that are going to sell your business and get it done. You can find more by going to inline.com. That's E-N-L-I-G-N.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, no matter where you're at in the world, they can help you find the right expert to help you sell your home or find the next home that you are looking for. And if you're in the Research Triangle Park of the Raleigh-Durham-Chapel Hill area, you can find out why they are known for their legendary customer service and you can learn more by going to lindacraft.com that's l-i-n-d-a-c-r-a-f-t.com and the t-shirt shout out this week is brought to you by o2 fitness it's the club that i love to work out five six days a week and you will too if you're here on the east coast and they're expanding every day and i love the folks at o2 fitness i love their trainers i love the people i love the staff they treat me well, and I love their gym, and so I just want to give them a shout-out and tell them thank you for giving me the T-shirt. And if you want to send a T-shirt, you can always find me and send an extra-large T-shirt to Jay Izzo at A New Direction. Dr. Best, this book is absolutely fabulous. I love this book because this I, I said it in the opening of the show, and I'm going to say it again. This is probably one of the most practical, useful guides that people will ever read in 97 pages. I loved it. I just absolutely loved it. 
And uh, so I want to dig right into this book. And and in chapter one of this book, and let's just dig right into it. You say, Ways okay. That Life Became So Difficult is the title of the chapter. And the first thing you come right out of the shoot is you say, how did you get where you are? Let's talk about this this whole idea of how life became difficult and how did we get where we are. Well, what I like to say is uh, if you think about your brain like a computer, a computer doesn't do anything until you put some programs on it. And as children, we're not born with empty computers. We inherit genetic belief systems and programmings. We have collective consciousness beliefs that we come into. And then before the age of six, we form a lot of subconscious belief systems. And these are our parameters of how we see and go out in the world. And it it changes our perspective on things. So these belief systems have led us to where we are in our lives now. Like as a young kid, uh, being a Catholic, uh, I believe that to become a saint, you had to suffer and be in pain and (laughs) suffer to be closer to God. And I, I really believed that. Right, and right. I kind of like was, where's my cancer? Where's my problem? Right. Cause I, I needed to suffer to be closer to God. So when I was 16 and I broke my back, I was like, Oh, well now I get a, now I get a suffer. Right. So it was kind of a weird thing. I mean, it's kind of messed up to, to fall into those belief systems, but you know, they're, they're part of a lot of um, religions and dogmas and things that we get along the way that maybe aren't really founded in any sort of truth. So, and and I get that. Listen, listen. I think we we grow up. You know, I mean, we can't we can't choose our parents. I mean, we may be able to choose our friends. We can't choose our parents. And I'm not blaming our parents. I, listen, my parents, I I think did the best that they could. They taught me some things that I had to break away from because they weren't good for uh-huh. me. They weren't healthy for me. I, I I didn't do well with them. And some of them, some of it was you know religious dogma that I needed to break away from because it wasn't healthy. And so I I think that happens to a lot of people and and some people don't have it at all and they learn all sorts of things. But you talk about that in, even though you learn these things and we create this system in our brain, right? That we really have some more power over it than maybe we want to give ourselves credit. Talk about that. Right. Well, I mean, we're not born with a manual that tells us how to go and, you know, delete a program and upload a new program and see how we're reacting to the world. And it's a lot of it is really starting with self-talk, listening to what you're saying to yourself. That can be the easiest way to start getting a clue into uh, what kind of belief systems are, are forming what we believe. Like, I remember one time I was just taking money to deposit at the bank, and I thought I cleared a lot of issues around money. This was like 20 years ago. And I was in the parking lot, and I was like, God, I hate money. And I was like, wow, that's not a good belief system if I really want to have money in my life. <laughs> so, so cleaning up self-talk and not continuing to, like, put obstacles in your way or put yourself down is the first easy way to start accepting uh, change in your life. Um, the When it gets into belief systems, it's a little harder to um, – go and clear those belief systems on your loan on your own until you have some sort of framework to do it. That's why I wrote this new book, which will be coming out called rewriting your life, Mm. which really gets into the nitty gritty of how to discover your belief systems and how to change them basically using quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Um, The little book I wrote basically as a cliff notes version to the big book, which, but I came out with the cliff notes version first. And that's because these are practical steps that anybody can do as long as you're consistent about putting it forth and being aware of when you're like going down the rabbit hole or when you're being triggered. So you have to have a little self-awareness and that's kind of the hardest thing in the beginning is you don't realize you've been sitting in the rabbit hole for an hour. If you catch yourself after an hour, then that's a good time to put the technique to use, to get out of it, to be more present, to stop worrying about the past and actually focus on what you want to create now yeah i guess one of the things i mean we're really not very self-aware i mean I, we're really not i mean let's let's be honest we we like to think that we're pretty self-aware but the truth of the matter is is we're really not all that self-aware because we 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 will sometimes be whenever we get defensive 
this is a tendency for us to try to, you know, you know, not blame ourselves for our words or what we said or our behavior or whatever it is. And so we have a tendency to not realize that our, the things that we say or things that we do actually are not only detrimental to ourselves, but they're detrimental to other people. And we say, well, that's just the way I am. And so we excuse it down the road. But the fact of the matter is we need to be paying attention to those things because we should be, the question we should be asking is, why am I? saying that why what my wife does this to me a lot she's so good at this I, I love the way she does this she will she will say something to me and in, in a very uh direct way uh that's a nice way of putting it and she will come back and then she will say to me you know i don't know why i said it that way i need to take a real close look at where that's coming from why why did that little thing that you do irritate me so much because that's just wrong and i love that when she does that because i know she's being very self-aware of her words. And then she makes a choice to say, all right, not only am I going to look at this, but I'm going to choose the next time how I'm going to handle that. And I think you, you say the same thing in reality. Yeah. I mean, definitely she's really on, on to something as far as changing through self-awareness. And I mean, it's a simple, but hard thing to do. Um, I noticed that when I, well, what I notice in a lot of people is that there is a certain amount of their actions that are really genetically prescribed, mm-hmm. kind of like a, a dog, like if I have a French bulldog, and he acts stubborn and he does certain things that are typical of a French bulldog. And it's something that he's not going to change. And it's something that sometimes people can't really change because it's really hard to be aware of those genetic programs. Right. Um, and it's really hard to change them because we are genetically programmed that way. But then there are a lot of other avenues that we act out of that are out of our own beliefs. And if we change those beliefs, then we can acknowledge, like she's acknowledging that she's not speaking to you in the way that she wants to. And that's really profound. And what that does on on a level is it starts rewriting her neurology so that she can, you know, speak to you in a different way in the future. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that uh, we both try to practice, and you mentioned this in, in your book, is, you know, we, we try to really focus on the behavior rather than the person, right? I mean, that's one of the things that we are both really try very hard. And, you know, if we're, if we're not happy with the person, it's not because of them. It's not personal. It's the specific behavior I didn't like you doing. You know, it's it's not, you know gosh, how stupid can you be by not putting the dishes in the dishwasher? I'm just making this up, perhaps. Right. I, I will not confirm <laughs> or deny either way. But how stupid can you be to not put the dishes in the dishwasher? Instead, she will say, explain to me the behavior of why it's so difficult for you to get the dishes in the dishwasher. Well, that's a different question, right? And 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 now it presents me in a different way to say, oh, I, I need to take a closer look at my own behavior because I don't even know where I learned that particular system of behavior that I wouldn't do that even though I know that's what she wants me to do, right? Why am I being resistant? So it opens me up, right? Because I clearly have a belief system that says, well, well, cause, go ahead. Because the first way is, is a judgment coming out. So you're going to be defensive, so you can't receive the information. Right. And the second way of asking that question is less defensive and you can actually go in and look at your core. Right. No, it's, it's true. One of the things you talk about, and we're, by the way, we're still in chapter one, (laughs) by the way, everybody, by the, by the way, everybody, if you're wondering, this book is only, this book is 97 pages. We're just in chapter one. I haven't, I haven't even got a chapter one because chapter one, uh, of this book, by the way, let me hold it up again for those people who are watching us live. And thank you for everybody by gosh, who's watching us live and, uh, all the people who are listening on Castbox, thank you so much. Um, everybody on Castbox FM who are uh, listening to us live, um, whether you're in my, your car or wherever, and all you podcast listeners, thank you so much. We appreciate you. The book's entitled 11 best ways to face life challenges. And we, we're just in chapter one. We're, we're talking about why your life may have become so difficult. You know, and we're talking about your belief systems and some ideas about how you may break those. And, and, and Dr. Ken Best joins us out of Los Angeles. He is the, 
He is the he is Hollywood's chiropractic doctor to the stars. He is a holistic doctor, and he is outstanding. And uh, and I love this book, and uh, can't wait to uh, give him an, an amazing Amazon review because this is truly a practical guide for you to walk through every area of your life. One of the things you talk about in this chapter, by the way, this first chapter is being present. And I think, uh, and we've been kind of dancing around that in our brief conversation here, but let's talk about being present and the importance of being present. Why is that, why is it hard and why is it so important? Well, it's, it's hard because we're really taught to worry about the past and worry about the future. So we, we rarely learn how to be present. I mean, young children are present and, the, and just watching them play and stuff and the joy that comes out mm. from them and how they move through emotions so easily. They can go from laughing to crying and back and forth in an instant. It's because they're, they're actually in the present moment and they're, and they're feeling what's happening in the moment. We as adults or young adults even, we're, we're lost in our thoughts and we're really worried about like that next conversation we're going to have with your boyfriend or girlfriend or what, what our parents are going to say when we get home and, or what to say with our kids when you find out they're smoking pot or, you know, you're, you're in your head so much that you're not present to the moment and happiness only exists in the present moment. Mm. So unless you can find ways to break those patterns so that this book is mostly what I would call pattern interrupts. Mm -hmm. It's to er interrupt that pattern or behavior that you're stuck in over and over. And it's kind of like potty. The, the difficult thing about it would be it's like potty training a dog. If you catch the dog an hour after it pees and then you wait another half hour to say no and take it outside, it's going to take a long time for that dog to understand not to be in the house. <laughs> but if you catch that dog as quickly as you can, and then take it outside and affirm the good behavior, then, then it picks it up pretty quick. And the brain is the same way. Yeah. If you're festering in your head for an hour about worrying about what your boss is going to say tomorrow, and you just keep letting that go on and on, and you get to work and that never even happens, you've just wasted an hour of your life worrying about something in the future or worrying about something in the past rather than being present to uh, maybe your kids playing in the yard and seeing their joy and letting that come over you and allowing yourself to be happy and going to work being happier, you know? So it, everything kind of bleeds into each other if, if you allow it in a positive way. You're not going to either confirm or deny that you, that you, this was a problem with you and Baxter, are you? <laughs> That, okay, but at, this, I'm, let me pull the curtain by. So Baxter is the name of his dog. It's a cute bulldog, by the way. It's just adorable bulldog. And uh, I, I, and I, I had to throw that in there at you. I just had to do that because it's like, going, okay, you're not going to confirm or deny that that happened, right? You're not going to do that for me. So, like, like I watch people going walking their dogs, and they're just on their phones. They're not even appreciating mm. or. or being with their dog or, or with their children, you know, they're stuck on their phones and they're not actually being present to the moment. And it's like, I think I fall in love with my dog every day when I take him out for a walk and he does a little weird quirk of his neck looking at me and then goes off sniffing again. It's like watching the dog be so present and be mm -hmm. so happy in the moment allows me to tune into that energy as well. Yeah, we, I think, uh, by the way, we're talking with Dr. Ken Best, author of the book, 11 Best Ways. By the way, did you notice what he did there? 11 Best Ways yeah. to Face Life's Challenges. That's clever. He did, you know, Dr. Ken Best, you know, 11 Best Ways. Uh, great book. It's absolutely fabulous. We're talking with him. He's brought to you today by Inline Business Brokers and Advisors. They have literally helped thousands of clients in the sale and purchase of businesses. When it's time to sell your business, contact the internationally known professionals at Inline Business Brokers and Advisors. You can learn more by going to nline.com. That's E-N-L-I-G-N.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, no matter where you're at in the world, you can be matched up with the expert that you need in order to sell your home or buy the next one you're looking for. And if you happen to be in the Research Triangle Park area, which is Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, find out why they are the legends of customer service. And they're bringing you Dr. Ken Best today and his book, 11 Best Ways to Face Life's Challenges, which, by the way, is available on Amazon, favorite bookstore. You can literally ask them, hey, I, I, I need to find this book called 11 Best Ways 
to face life's challenges. Can I get that? And they will sell yes. And then if they say, but we don't have it on the shelf, say, oh my gosh, you got to get it. I was listening to A New Direction with Jay Izzo and he was talking to Ken Best. This book is practically going to help everybody in the world. You need to have this on the shelf facing out. So that's what you need to do when you go into your next Barnes and Noble or Books a Million or for you folks up in Canada, Chapters Bookstores, make sure that they have this on the shelf because it, it's a fantastic book. One, one of the things that you just talked about here, Dr. Best, and that I really do appreciate is so often re- um, reinforce ourselves for the wrong thing. You know, we, we have a tendency, I, I've always noticed that I've never, I've never ever seen anybody spiral up. They always spiral down, right? And it's generally because they're focused on something in their past that they feel that they can't correct or they regret or there's something else going on. And then what happens is we, we reinforce ourselves for this negative behavior, this negative thought process, because we will do this thing called comfort food, right? Right? I mean, this is, it's, right. it's classical right. reinforcement, right? It's like, I'm feeling miserable, so what am I going to do? I'm going to eat something I like. So what did we just reinforce? We reinforced being miserable it, by, by eating stuff that, first of all, is crud. And, but we, we call I, I love how we call crud comfort food. Don't you, I, don't you love that? Right. <laughs> but, but we do. Sure. And then we end up reinforcing this bad behavior. And then what happens is we continue to spiral down. And so we we're and we end up wasting all this time you know, doing the wrong thing. And we just are so unself. We're just not very self-aware. And, and, and I think if we could just get a little bit more aware of understanding what you're saying is. There's nothing I can do about the past, so why am I dwelling there? There's really nothing I can do about the future, so why am I trying to go there? When the truth of the matter is, I need to be right here, right now, focused on what I'm doing right here. But we're, God, we're so easily distracted and so easily disconnected, don't you think? And that, that's why I think you need to have certain systems that you can put into play when you're you're falling into that mode, so you can retrain and rewire the way your brain's going. So mm-hmm. now, anytime my brain even goes for a few seconds down that rabbit hole, automatically I'm telling my brain, "Stop! What do I want now? How can I create it?" And then I I, I focus on taking action on that, so it be, allows me to constantly stay present and to stay present to what I want. Uh, the thing with comfort foods is they're comfort foods for another reason, not just beating yourself up, but they're oftentimes you're inflammatory foods. So we're eating inflammatory foods right. in order to get a little drug push from our adrenal gland. So the adrenals release cortisol to this inflammation to bring it down. And that cortisol makes us feel good. So it's a, it's a little bit of a drug addiction. It is where we make ourselves feel bad so we can feel good for a moment and then we that cycle continues it it does i don't think people understand this that there is such thing as food addictions right i mean we we want to blame alcohol we want to blame drugs right but the fact of the matter is you can be addicted to anything right and generally when we're addicted to something it's generally not something that's good for us typically you know I, i i've never ever heard anybody go Oh my gosh! I can't stop eating asparagus. I, I don't know what it is. I'm so addicted to asparagus. I can't. I can't get enough of it. I've, I've never heard anybody actually say that to me. Okay, once, but I have. <laughs> but I watch people consume soda after soda after soda, or consume caffeine. You know, one caffeine drink after another. I mean, we have them now in giant cans, cold cans, and and I watch them consume it one after another after another throughout the day. You know, in in an effort to say, oh, well, this makes me feel good or this, you know, gives me energy or whatever. And it's all false because it's full of sugar and other garbage that's just not good for us. And we excuse it, but we what we don't, really don't understand is we're addicted to it. And we can be addicted to our own pain. I mean, right? I mean, we, we, we can sometimes, we feel like we've got to have our pain or our anger or our suffering because like you said, right? You grew up with it. How can I get closer to God without, you know, how you grew up? How can I get closer to God without some pain? And so now I'm, now I'm actually working on an addiction to pain, right? Because I, I feel like I got to have it in order to progress. Yeah, or you create ways in your life in order to create more suffering or to create more pain. (laughs) And it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's what happens when you need to 
listen to that self-talk and see where that's coming from so that you can release those uh, belief systems. While it is difficult to clear belief systems without a, a set uh, process, which I was talking about in my new book that's going to be coming out, you can still have aha moments. So mm-hmm. like when you were talking about earlier with your wife and, and she talked about needing to address her behavior and speak to you in a different way. Right. And then asking you the questions that allow you to look at where that was coming from. You can have an aha moment like, oh, I could be resisting doing my dishes after I, you know, eat just because that's the way I I saw my dad do that with my mom all the time. And, you know, and you recognize where it's coming from and you're like, you know what? I really don't want to be like that. Right. Right. So it's like. Yeah, go ahead. No, well, I was gonna, you know, one of the the opposite question that you ask still here in chapter one is, what do you really want? Right? I mean, what is it? Right? I mean, that's the question you really ask, isn't that part and of when it? When I do seminars, most people I'll ask how many people really know what they want, and very few people actually raise their hand because they've they've never really stopped to really figure out what they want. I mean, if it's just happiness, you can be happy right now. You don't need anything to be happy. And that's the catch. Well, it is the catch, isn't it? Right? I mean, I mean, don't, I mean, I, I said this in the opening, right? You know, when it comes to emotional intelligence or the emotional quotient, so much of this is just a choice, by the way, that you have, you, you can control your emotions. If you want to be happy. Happiness you, is a choice. Absolutely. You, you, if you want to choose to be happy, be happy. Right. I mean, but, but people don't know what they want when you, and, and you were right when you said that in the book and, and you said, when you go to these seminars, and you ask people, what do you want? They, they really don't know. How do we discover that? How do we discover what we really want? Where, where is that? Where is, what is it? What is the discovery process in your opinion to discover what it is we really want? Well, I think it, comes down to your life path your life purpose and you know without having a life path or life purpose it's hard to determine what you really want out of life Mm. and so sometimes really sitting down and doing your homework is like if i could choose whatever i want what is it that i want out of life Mm. what do i want to do with my life if i could do what i want to do in my life and not have to worry about money what is it that i would do Right. And it, if I want to choose something that doesn't necessarily make a lot of money, how can I do that and make enough money to support myself and my family? Uh, so it's look, looking at your opportunities from more of a life path purpose. Mm. And um, yeah. They're still heavy here. Still with me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I felt like I, I felt like I lost you there for a second. <laughs> sorry about that. So when, when it comes to happiness, right, and we just, we briefly yep. jumped into happiness, right? We said, well, you know, happiness is a choice, right? But we, but we don't always believe that happiness is a choice. We believe that somehow happiness is connected to either a situation, a thing, or a person. How do we break that pattern of, of the idea so- that my happiness is dependent on something or someone else? So first of all, we're just marketed to since we were since we could learn to read or listen to some TV, and we're always taught that when you get this, you're going to be happy. And they right. they show the people being happy when they get the new jewelry or the new car. So we're kind of taught that we need we need things in order to be happy, and and we predicate that it's like, oh, I'll be happy when I lose ten pounds. Oh, I'll be happy when I get that new house. So we stop ourselves from allowing ourselves to be happy along the journey and we need to be happy the whole way along the journey otherwise when we get to where we are and we get that new car we're we're still an unhappy person because we've never learned how to be present and happy in the moment because then you're like oh well now i have this car payment so how am i going to pay for that so you know the, the happiness you get from things is very fleeting i'd say maybe happiness from places could be more prolonged because that's more bringing you into the present moment because you're investigating new places and things like when you're on a vacation. So you might experience more happiness. Um, I went to Tibet uh, a few years back 
and I was supposedly going with this group and this enlightened yogi master. And at some point I, I just realized that they were a cult and I wanted to break away from them, but I was in the middle of nowhere, so I couldn't do anything about it. And I was not too happy. <laughs> and in fact, I was, I was driving myself a little batty because I would try to do my rabbit hole thing. And I was like, when it came down to it, I was like, I want to get out of here. How can I do that? How can I create that? So bizarrely, I ended up manifesting it. The, com- the owner of the trekking company was going to get me out of there early if I really wanted to go. And then I was staring at this yak in the field. I was at the base of Mount Kailash. I was at 19,000 feet. I had altitude sickness for a week. I lost mm-hmm. like 15 pounds that week. So I was pretty sick and not feeling too good and had my like third emotional breakdown. And I'm staring at this yak that's like at least a hundred yards away, but I zoomed in on its face and I was like, wow, that yak is happy. And I'm like, well, why should I be any less happy than this yak in this one of the most beautiful places in the world? And I realized I was giving my happiness away to this group. So I went in, I cleared those beliefs quickly. And then I had this amazing rush of like bliss and joy. It was completely unexpected. And I didn't... (laughs) I just allowed it to kind of flow. I had like tears of joy coming out of my face. Mm -hmm. And I realized I could always choose to be happy. Even if I'm like half dying and out in the middle of nowhere with this, you know, a cult. Mm -hmm. And so I I was like, you know, when I get back to Los Angeles, I'm going to take this with me because no matter what's going on in LA, it's not going to be half this bad. And I can always choose to be happy. That's awesome. and choosing to be happy allows you to face your challenges head on and resolve them in the best way possible. I love that because, you know, I love that the idea and, and I don't think people can really grasp it because I don't think we sometimes don't want to because I think, again, sometimes we're so addicted to our drama and our our, our anger or whatever it is that we don't want to really be happy. We say we do, but I don't know that sometimes we really do because if we really chose to, I, I believe that we could be happy. Right. And, and I, right. there's a, and why would you not want to choose that? People will say to me, well, why wouldn't I want that? Well, because sometimes we just actually like to be miserable because there's something comforting about being miserable. And I know that sounds crazy, but the truth of the matter is we're, often quite comfortable in our misery and with and and we we all know people right we all know people out there i'm sure you do or have run across them where quite frankly they aren't happy if they're not miserable which is bizarre <laughs> yes <laughs> right yes. i mean it's it's absolutely but true it's, it's also part of our you know our belief systems like it if we were like literally abandoned by parents if we had a, a lot of things befall us to where we became a victim. So you're stuck in this victimhood, this misery, this suffering. We kind of end up wearing it like it's our badge of honor, like, look what I've gone through. And so you have to hold on to all that misery and suffering because that's your identity. I know. But I... then that does not allow for happiness. It, it doesn't. So you have to be willing to lose that identity and say, who am I? If I'm a happy person, who am I if I let go of my abandonment and suffering and all these bad things that happen to me? Mm. Wow. I mean, I really get to choose who I'm going to be in this life instead of being what people have forced me into being in the past. Mm. Okay. You, you, by the way, we're talking to Dr. Ken Best and he wrote this amazing book and we're, we're just walking our way through parts of it. It's called the 11 best ways to face life's challenges. And it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Matter of fact, there's a picture of him and Baxter on the back and uh, Baxter's cute as a button dog, his little dog there. And I'm a dog lover. You know, I am. So 11 best ways to face life's challenges. And we are talking about happiness and, and we've talked about our, our brain systems and, and our belief systems and the things that we create for ourselves and, and uh, how to get out of our misery. And, one of the things that you've already alluded to, Doctor Best, is the rabbit hole. And so, and you've mentioned this, and you mentioned it in the book, and I loved, I loved it because I love the way you use the term. Help people understand what the rabbit hole is, and then how do we get out of the rabbit hole? So, 
So the rabbit hole was one of the most significant things for me as far as changing my daily behavior. And the rabbit hole, I would say, is that dark, twisting tunnel of negative thoughts that spiral in when we're thinking, going over the past, something we did wrong, something that bad happened to us, or we're worried about something in the future. Or it could just be some imaginary self-talk that starts happening like when you're driving a car and you're imagining this whole like conversation with somebody that you'll never have. I mean, you're really just spinning your wheels. You're, you're giving too much credit to negative thoughts that are really not necessarily going to materialize or do you want them to materialize. Mm -hmm. So getting out of the rabbit hole is needing to recognize in the moment, like I'm spinning off in my head. And when I'm spinning off down that rabbit hole, I need to tell my brain stop. Mm -hmm. And what happened was the first time this happened, I was driving my car. I had been doing Sadie healing for six years at that point. I had changed thousands of belief systems on myself. And I, I noticed my brain going into this whole conversation about something with someone who, which would probably never happen. And I, I was like, to myself, I was like, really? I mean, I'm going there. Shouldn't I be enlightened at this point? I've changed all these beliefs. Like, why is my brain grooving down this rabbit hole? So I kind of yelled at my brain for a moment out loud. I said, stop while I'm driving my car. And then it was suddenly quiet. And I was like, oh, wow, my brain's actually participating. It's being quiet. So then I thought, well, what do I want? And then something popped up, an idea popped up pretty quickly. And then I was like, okay, how can I create that? And then an answer popped up from the right brain. If you don't overanalyze it, the right brain comes in and gives you an answer pretty quickly. And then I was like, all right, let's take action. So I took action on it and things happened. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a great pattern interrupt. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me see how long I can keep this up. In the beginning, I'd catch myself after like an hour, I'd be spinning in the brain. I'm like, oh my God, I've been in the rabbit hole for an hour. But I wouldn't beat myself up to it for it. I would just go back to that little process that I created. And then I kept repeating it. And day after day, instead of an hour, then it was a half an hour and then it was 20 minutes. And after two weeks, it got down to like 30 seconds, a minute. And then that day, like two weeks later, I could feel the groove in my brain to go down that rabbit hole. And I was like, nope, not going to go there. <laughs> and I, I actually imagined a, a rabbit hole on the floor and I walked around it. And I sat on the couch and I, my brain was so quiet. And I was like, wow, this is like I'm meditating in life now. I mean, I never felt like I could turn off my brain even for a second, let alone, you know, sit there like I'm meditating without right. trying to meditate. Right. So... You know, it was such a big change. Then when I kept this up for like a year, I realized I couldn't even get depressed about things anymore because it was better to take action and correct things that would have normally caused me to be depressed. Like in my 20s, I was so easily depressed because that was like a comfort zone, like you were talking about earlier. Right. And now it was like something that was a waste of time, mm. which was great. Yeah, we're, we're talking with Dr. Ken Best, by the way, author of the book, 11 Best Ways to Face Life's Challenges. He is brought to you today uh, by inline business brokers and advisors. They have literally helped thousands of clients in sale purchase of their businesses, and they represent profitable privately held companies with gross annual revenues in excess of a million dollars. So inline delivers the highest market value in the shortest amount of time with complete confidentiality. That is the registered trademark. You can learn more by going to inline.com. That's E-N-L-I-G-N.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, no matter where you're at in the world, Linda Craft and her team can help you find the right realtor to make sure that you are going to get the best, absolute best customer service. And if you're in the Research Triangle Park, that's the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area of North Carolina, find out why they are the legends of customer service and they're bringing you Dr. Ken Best and his book, 11 Best Ways to Face Life Challenges. And by the way, I want to just say this about Dr. Ken Best. He's there, he's got a number. There's a couple of websites I want to point everybody to. One is Dr. Ken Best. That's D-R-K-E-N-B-E-S-T.com. 
And uh, that is his uh, chiropractic uh, website in Los Angeles. And by the way, for those of you who listen in LA on the podcast or listening to me live, and I have, I don't know how many of you out there that do in LA, but I appreciate you listening. He's at uh, 6135 Lindenhurst Avenue in LA and uh, 90048. And if you're trying to go, I'm not sure I know where Lindenhurst is. Well, his office is conveniently located between Beverly Hills and West Hollywood, three blocks north of Wilshire. Uh, one block north of Sixth Street. So if you're kind of doing that, and he, by the way, he did not pay me to do that. I'm, I'm literally doing this because I, I love him and I love his book. And he also has another website that I really, really encourage you to check out. It's called ManyLevels.com. That's right, ManyLevels.com. It's M-A-N-Y-L-E-V-E-L-S.com. And uh, he, he's got a number of videos on there. They're absolutely outstanding and um, talks about holistic medicine. And uh, you'll really, really enjoy manylevels.com. It's, it's really a great website. And uh, it's, it's, I'm just telling you, it's just all part of who he is in the book. And um, keeping us from, you know, doing this brain interrupt. I love what you did there in describing, you know, how you break out, broke out of a rabbit hole. Because I think one of the things that we don't understand very well is that we've got to stop this pattern of behavior. And this pattern, and thinking is a behavior. A lot of people don't understand that. But thinking is a behavior. And we can, we can reinforce our thinking in the same way we can reinforce our behavior. We can punish our thinking the same way we punish a behavior. But we can interrupt our thinking in the same way we interrupt behavior. And I don't think we fully understand that our thought our thought processes can be interrupted. I mean, we I don't have to think this way right now. I can think differently, or I don't have to think at all. And I, I and 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 we get so I think we've been taught that and especially I feel like I don't know why, maybe Maybe this is just me because I pay attention to it more. But I really believe that I think I'm hearing more about, you know, creating narratives in our brain that say it's not your fault. You you, you can't stop it. You know, it's because everybody else has done this to you. This is why you think this way. And, you know, you should be angry at all those other people because your your brain is being taken over by other people and other things. And uh, you have no, it's not your fault because you think this way. It's not your fault for acting this way. And, and I, I keep hearing that message, um, in a lot of different ways. And it's just so wrong because what we should be telling people is it doesn't matter what's happened to you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You have choices. You can break this. You can stop this. You know, I mean, are you, do you get, do you get kind of the feeling that sometimes we're hearing that message preached to us a little bit? Well, yeah, definitely. And I think in one way it's a good message and not to, assign blame but we still have to be willing to um move past that yeah in a uh, non-judgmental way so right. that we can just say like when i was saying i i'm not beating myself up for spending an hour in the rabbit hole because if you beat yourself up then you then you're in that like spiral going back down again right. so I think it's good in a way, but I understand what you're saying as far as like not taking accountability or responsibility because we're, we're constantly responsible for the way we respond to anything in life. And whether we choose to, you know, help somebody out or not help somebody out, it, it doesn't, that doesn't matter, but it's the ability to be responsive in the moment, be present in the moment and decide what you really want to do and what's, you know, good for you what's good for the planet what's good for your family right. you know it's uh taking that responsibility and i think that's more what you're talking about is. Is, is being able to be responsible and take responsibility for it. it 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 really is and and while we're here let's talk about triggers and because you, you talk in uh, chapter four you talk about ways to break triggers and one of the one of the topics that i really 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 loved because I, I'm kind of I'm kind of subtly going this direction, is being triggered by someone you love. Let's talk about that a little bit, about being triggered by someone you love and breaking triggers. Let's talk about that. Well, it's it's a big deal, especially for relationships, because when you're triggered, when you're emotionally triggered, you have to think about it as being chemically induced, like somebody just injected you with chemicals to make you enraged or to make you fearful 
because that's what's happening in the brain. Your hypothalamus it is a short, shortcut process that goes from needing to have some rational thought behavior to have a response to just in five seconds to go from zero to a thousand in, in the level of rage. And when you're chemically induced by a trigger into an emotion, it's hard for you to have any sort of uh, practical sense because you, you think you're validated because it, it seems so real and so vibrant inside you that you have to react that way. And you, you can't even consciously communicate with somebody at that point. So, and these are, these triggers usually come from our childhood or our early relationships. And then we bring them over to when like our new relationship says one sentence to us and it just throws us into an anger rage where we can't even really communicate effectively with the person. I had this happen with a, a patient. She was, she came in, she came in for some other stuff, but she was talking about her relationship saying, I think I need to get divorced because all, all we do is yell at each other. We, we can't communicate about anything anymore. And I, so I taught her this breaking trigger technique and it's pretty simple, like four steps. So she was doing it one time with her husband because you have to do it in the moment because you have to, again, have self-awareness that you're being triggered. Right. So she would catch herself when she went off the handle and she would close her eyes and she'd go through these like four steps. And at one point, her husband's like, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm breaking my triggers. So she explained it to him. So he started doing it at the same time when they both would trigger each other. And then after they would clear and they would get in a space where they could actually discuss what's going on, it completely changed their relationship mm. and, and healed it to the point that, you know, neither one of them felt like getting divorced because it was just about communication. Mm. Yeah. You know, words can trigger. Listen, I, I'm the first one to admit that there are certain words that I'm aware of that my wife can say to me that can that trigger. And I have to catch myself on my response. Right. Because I know that my I, I'm control of my response. That's my my firm belief is, you know what you could you could say or do. But I am in control of my response. And I'm and I'm I'm almost prideful about you know, you can control this response. You do not have to respond just because you're angry. You do not have to feel anger. Mm -hmm. I don't have to respond angrily. I don't have to respond at all. I don't, I don't have to do it. I could sit in a ball and cry. I have the choice of my response. There are two words that really trigger me, <laughs> and it's always and never. All right, and let me give you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they they trigger me. <laughs> you know, you always leave the light on in the pantry. <laughs> Right. right? The, no, the, I know. <laughs> right. I turned it off yesterday. I, I know, right? Exactly. I'm like, there's only there's only two places where always and never exist, and that's in the dictionary. Okay, they don't they don't exist in real right. life. I'm sorry, but those are my trigger words, and I know that those are, and I know that those are words that I go, if those are said to me. The first thing is I know that those are my trigger words and I know that I, and, and this is why I loved your book because it was just a reinforcement that I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track and I'm doing the right things and you've given me some other things to work on. But as soon as I recognize that those are trigger words, it's saying to myself, I don't have to respond to them though. I, I, I can make a better response than, that, than what I want to make right now. And so actually for me, the first practice step has been to not say anything is like, okay, that's my trigger word. Don't say anything because you're about to say something stupid. So don't do it. <laughs> right. I mean, it's my first, that's my first, that is my first practice. That's my, that's been my, um, uh, what do I call it? it, it you know, it's my first con mantra. You know, yeah. Well, it's my classical conditioning moment. I'm trying to condition myself, right? Just like Pavlov's dogs that every time I hear that word, I'm not going to respond because I know that right. before my response was, Every time I heard that word, I got flush red angry and was like, you know what? That's absolutely not true, right? And I may or may not have said it in exactly that tone. But <laughs> but now, you know, it's kind of re – I mean, to me, what you're talking about here and a lot of this is I have you have to be in that moment and really recondition yourself, almost like Pavlov's dogs, to condition yourself to make a different response. Is that, did I get that wrong? Right. No, you're completely right. You're retraining the way your brain works in response to that. So, like, I get the order in my brain that always you never 
never do dishes. And I'm right. like, I do dishes 40% of the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you get, so you feel yourself getting angry and enraged by that. And in the technique, you're the owner, basically you're the owner of the brain, the way your brain works. Right. So you're up in the brain. I picture up in the hypothalamus right. that I have a factory and I'm up on the second floor of the factory and I'm the business owner. And down below is the factory with generating all these chemicals spilling over into the brain and to, into the rest of the body. And I have my little minions down there, you know, in that delivery system. So I see the factory pumping out chemicals of anger and I'm, I, get that order on my desk and I stamp it three times with my red cancel symbol, stop, cancel, cancel, cancel. And I get on the loudspeaker and I tell everybody like shut down the factory. And I see the factory shutting down. Like your, your subconscious brain really likes to work with images. So if you, if you're a visual person, it works really well. If you're not visual, you have to do another technique. But if you're visual, you're giving your subconscious a cue of what you're doing it's like self-hypnosis like you're going in to break this hardwired pattern so you need a little bit of a format so your brain goes oh we're doing that thing and once you do this several times it gets easier and easier and quicker each time so i'm telling them to shut down the factory i watch it shut down and then i'm going to lower my level of anger by one notch and i'm going to walk down 10 steps I don't take another step down until I lower it another notch. Mm. So by the time I get to the bottom of the floor, the anger is gone. And sometimes I replace it with, okay, let's be happy. Mm. And I was doing this. One of my friends triggered me. I, we were at a restaurant on the street outside, and I instantly kind of went into a rage. And they go, oh, do your thing. I was like, oh, God, I hate when people know my stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I closed. I admit it. So I closed my eyes. It literally took me 10 seconds. Like I went boom, 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 boom down the steps. And before I opened my eyes, they go, oh, that's better. Which might have normally irritated me in the past, but it made me laugh. And it completely broke the whole energy of the moment. Like that would have bothered me probably all day long if I had let that go. But instead, you know, I was able to... um, break it and we kind of laughed about it and then it was gone i i love i love that when you said because i i know this right when people know me like if i do some coaching with the uh you know it, i do some business coaching and as and speaking and when people know me so well because of the books i write and the, and the things i talk about and they know me so well that they know my stuff and they will say do that thing that you do you know, that response uh, control thing. Yeah. And, and you know, you do want to be mad, but you, you actually are laughing because they're calling you on your stuff and you go, man, the fact that you even know my stuff that well actually makes me giggle a little bit because it was like, good for you. You know, right? I mean, I don't actually mind being called out on that. That's that's pretty cool. We're talking to Dr. Ken Best, and he is he is the best, by the way. <laughs> he, is, he is the best. He's got this book that I'm holding up on Facebook Live and by, by the way, let me just say to everybody, CastBox FM listeners, you guys rock, all right? You, I'm on live here on CastBox FM, and you guys have just stayed with the show and are bringing your friends, and I just want to say thank you to all my CastBox FM listeners um, that are listening live. You guys are just absolutely fantastic, so um, thank you so much for doing that, and my Facebook Live folks, thank you for doing that as well, and all you podcast listeners out there who are listening to the show later, thank you. The book's entitled 11 Best Ways to Face Life's Challenges, and we're talking with Dr. Ken Best, and uh, we've kind of worked our way through a few chapters of the book, and I'm dealing with triggers, and um, we're going we're gonna to have to, I know that Dr. Ken Best has to go um, shortly here, but um, uh, I do want to ask just a, a question or two, and, and before we get out of here, hopefully, um, he, do you have time for me to continue to ask a couple questions? Uh, sure, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Because the one thing I do want to, the one thing I want to talk about and, and, and deal with is I want to talk about dealing with fear. Because I think fear is one of those things that... I don't care. I, I listen. I'm six feet five inches tall, and 260 pounds, and I train and work out. And but if I'm really honest with myself, I have fears, right? And you know, I, I fear this thing of sometimes not being good enough. I fear, you know, I have my own. I have my own set of fears. There's sometimes things that you know, I, I I fear getting older. I fear a lot of things, right? I mean, that's just the truth. I mean, for people who say that we don't fear, that's crazy. And you know, shame is based in fear. 
right? When we feel ashamed or embarrassed, you know, it's the, there's fear there as well. Talk about fear. How do we deal with it and how do we break where it comes from and how do we break from, break away from it? So, you know, I would say there, there's feelings and there's emotions and feelings are our gut feelings that keep us connected to the world, present to the world. They keep us safe. They keep us happy. They keep us sad, but only for the moment that we're connected to whatever is going on to that in the present. And then there's emotions, which present themselves like feelings, but emotions are stuck feelings. And they basically usually start in our head. We create a thought about something and then, oh, they'll never stay with us. And then that starts creating fear. Oh, it's not safe around to walk around this corner. So that creates fear. So like in this in instance of fear, if I'm walking around the corner and I'm in Beverly Hills, so I think it's a perfectly safe neighborhood and I get this gut feeling of fear and, but I don't, I don't trust it. And I walk around the corner and then I get mugged or hit by a cyclist or something like that. It was my subconscious trying to let me know, Hey, be careful going around the corner. So fear is not always a bad thing when it's a feeling that's okay because it's actually trying to communicate something to you, but it should be short lived. It shouldn't be long lived. Like after I've walked around the corner and I dodged the bike, that's going to run into me. I should be able to let that fear go and be present to the moment. And you know, my feelings keep me in touch with the world. If like I'm in a bad neighborhood and I, and, but it's daylight and everything. And I'm like, Oh, Maybe I shouldn't walk around this corner. And I walk around the corner and nothing happens. And see, then, I, then I'm like, well, see, I shouldn't trust my feelings. Well, because it wasn't really a feeling. It was an emotion. So I'd like to make those distinctions about the feeling of fear and the emotion of fear. Yeah. So what, what you're talking about more of, I think, is the emotion of fear. Yeah. And it's where, we, where we're in that rabbit hole mm. or worried about the future or uh, where we're making ourselves not good enough and things like that. Sure. So it's a big topic. It's really predicated on most of our belief systems. And you really kind of have to dig in and find out where the core of those fears are coming from. Mm. But a simple way to ask, start asking your question is like, okay, so I'm afraid to go on this interview because I might not get the job. Well, so what's the worst thing that happens if I don't go, if I go in and don't get the job? Or if I, what's the best thing that happens if I go in and I don't get a job? I've had the experience of going through the interview. If I don't do the interview, then I, I, of course I'm not going to have a chance of getting the job. So you, you start breaking down by digging down to asking yourself what what's the best, and you can eat, keep asking yourself more and more questions and kind of dig down to the core. And then if it's a aha moment, mm -hmm. you actually start shifting your neurology where you realize, okay, I've been holding on to this irrational fear for a long time for no reason. And then you can start dispelling those fears by, by taking new actions to say, okay, well, I'm going to do something that's opposite to what I would have normally done so that I can, you know, experience what that's like. And maybe it's a great experience and maybe it wasn't a great experience, but it opened you up to a new experience instead of just living your life in a cupboard. That's awesome. We're talking with Dr. Ken Best and we've, we've been with him for over an hour. And by the way, it hasn't felt like an hour to me, Dr. Best. It's, it's felt like 10 minutes and you have been an amazing guest. And, and so I want to thank you. Uh, for doing that. Before you go, we're going to have you do your moment, but I want to just uh, remind everybody that Dr. Best has been brought to you today by uh, Inline Business Brokers and Advisors. And, um, you know, here's the deal. They partner with business owners when it's time to sell their business. And when it comes time to sell your business, contact the internationally known professionals at Inline Business Brokers and Advisors. You can learn more by going online to inline.com. That's E-N-L-I-G-N.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, it doesn't matter where you're at in the world, they can help you find the right professional to help you buy or sell your home. And if you are in the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, Research Triangle Park area, you know, why don't you find out why they are known for their legendary customer service? 
and uh, because they will help you. And you can learn more by going to lindacraft.com. It's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. Dr. Best, every time I close the show, I always feel like I have a new friend. And you certainly, I, I believe that you're a new friend. We, we just agree on so much. And I just enjoyed you so much being on the show. And so I want to just tell you how grateful I am and thankful that you uh, chose to be on A New Direction uh, with me today and, and, and helping so many people all over the world because we're downloaded in 24 countries around the world. And so this isn't just a U.S. show. This is a worldwide show. And so I, I want to, first of all, thank you uh, for that. So thank you. And, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. And then the last thing I always ask my friend guests to do is I ask them, since the show's called A New Direction, if you were to leave the listeners all over the all over the world, if you were to leave them with a new direction based on based on Ken Best and his 11 best ways to face life's challenges, what would that new direction be that Dr. Ken Best would leave with the listener? Well, I think one of the simplest things to talk about, and we talked about it a little bit, is that if you're trying to create a new path in your life and a new direction, it, it, that can be scary at times, and there can be things that get in your way. If you start list, just listening to the self-talk like we were talking about, and you start writing down some of that self-talk, and you start asking yourself some questions like, where, where does that come from, and why am I allowing it to stop me from pursuing my, my dreams and what I want to create? And especially if you do this before you go to bed, so you can write these things down and look at it before you go to bed. Let your subconscious start filing it away and playing, playing with it and writing down what you really want. Like we were talking about, like a lot of people don't know what they really want. So after you're writing down the self-talk, write down the, the three main things that you want to create out of your life and what you want for your life. And then pose that as a question to your subconscious before, before you go to bed, just say, you know, how can I create this new thing in my life? And just let it go and go to sleep and allow your subconscious to, you know, filter through all these belief systems. Because, you know, it's a lot of work to go and change patterns and belief systems, but this is a, a very simple way to start on that new direction. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, have a pad of paper next to the bed and write down some of the ideas that start coming up through your subconsciousness into your conscious mind so you can actually start applying that to your life. Mm beautiful. His name's Dr. Ken Best. He's joined us for over an hour. He has been so gracious and I am so grateful. Um, Dr. Best, will you just hang on just for a second? Ladies and gentlemen, okay. this is the show, right? A new direction. And Dr. Best gave you a lot of great tips. And by the way, we didn't even touch in half this book, right? That's how that's, I mean, for 97 pages, we didn't even touch in half the book. That's how great this book is. It's 11 best ways to face life's challenges available. On Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, folks in Canada, Chapters, bookstores, everywhere around the world. Listen, get the book. It, it, you you will read this. You will read this in a very quick period of time. It's going to be helpful to you. It's going to save you. It's probably going to save your relationships. It really will. It's going to open your eyes to what you need to do and what you can do to help your relationships grow, but help you become something different, something better. It's going to help you change and change can be scary, but don't be scared of this because this is a good change and it's going to make you better. As I say every week, folks, be inspired because when you're inspired, that means you can inspire someone else. And in turn, that means that they can inspire others as well. And that can make this world an amazing place. And I'm grateful for this world and I'm grateful for you. And so until next week, when I have another great guest, you know what I say every week. Ciao, everybody. The time has come. For you to go A new direction A brand new day A new direction Things are gonna change You can find the strength To go a different way Yeah The time has come For a new direction your confidence and the answers don't make sense you got to keep your hope alive you got
what you know you can survive This is your time to fly A new direction, a brand new day A new direction, things are gonna change You can find the strength to go a different way Your dreams will take you places you have never been before Find your passion, find your strength